Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. It seems like far too often we are reading headlines and watching videos of people, specifically black people, being gunned down by men and women who are sworn to protect and serve. Most recently, a Texas officer shot a woman five times, killing her. While we are all aware of the problems in our search to make some sense of all of this, We've invited ATO Homicides Vince Velasquez to offer us some in insight and maybe even some solutions from a law enforcement perspective. Detective Velasquez, thanks for joining us yes. here on the show today. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, we've been talking about the woman that was shot in Texas. Uh, we just talked about it in the last segment as well. And based on your professional experience, I'm sure you've seen the video. Uh, how would you have uh, de-escalated that situation in another way? You know, uh, I understand that she had a warrant on her. And when, when you look at those things and there's an officer that's by himself uh, and it's a woman, and Pastor Brian hit on something I thought was really good. You know, when you talk about how women are viewed in our country, even in law enforcement, you know, it, it's an authoritarian type of position that we have as police officers. So when you're dealing with a woman, they are not in the same level of interaction they would with a man. It's almost as if you do what I tell you to do. Mm -hmm. So that this, comes this is, into play. It wow. comes into play. So with that, with, with what I saw in the video, you know, Monday morning quarterback in this thing, there's so many other things that could have happened. You know, I think I would have waited for some more officers to come there. Even if she went into her apartment, you know, depending on what this warrant was from, for, there were other ways we could have done this. But once hands go on somebody and there's a resistance, now we're faced with a decision mm -hmm. to walk away or do we continue in going forward with what, what, what happens next? And in this case, uh, it's alleged that she took his taser, actually tased him, and then he used deadly force. Now, in, in, in law enforcement, Using a taser on a police officer does constitute using deadly force because if you incapacitate a police officer, you could take their weapon and shoot them with it. I keep, I keep going back to her walking away, clearly nothing in her hands. Uh, she wasn't an immediate threat to the officer. There's nothing wrong with backing up, waiting a minute, regrouping, talking to yourself. Like yeah. as a human being. Right. That's yeah. what this is all yes. about. Yes. This, is, this is not, it's, when people say community policing, this is human behavior. This yeah. is what yes. we deal with every day. And I'll give you an example. This morning, I go to the coffee shop like I do every day. I step into a role. My role is a consumer. How you doing today? I would like a medium coffee with cream and sugar. Their response is what I expect it to be. So we're not being ourselves. We're programmed that way. Police officers are programmed that way. I'm officer so-and-so. I'm detective so-and-so. What's wrong with saying your first name mm -hmm. and being personal with it? So my partner on our show, ATL Homicide, David Quinn, and I have completely turned things around from we started on day one. We don't say detective so-and-so. I'm Vince Velasquez, that's David Quinn. Mm -hmm. And we give them a personal approach. Uh, this unfortunate incident in Texas, when I look at it, at the end of the day, a woman is dead mm. on a warrant what could have been resolved mm -hmm. easily in easily. another way. Mm -hmm. And that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the tragedy of this whole thing. Well, well, you know, the one, one, another one of the tragedies is that we keep hearing this oh so often. And just recently in social media, we hear of the officer who was trying to arrest a man for a warrant, and it turned out to be the wrong guy. And here he was in his own yard with his children. Yes. I so saw what, that video. So what can we do uh, to, to defend ourselves when we render ourselves hopeless in a situation? <laughs> well, you know, I saw that video. God bless that man. First of all, I'm glad they recorded it. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and if you look at that video, he was passively resisting, which I, in my opinion, he did exactly what he should have done. Because too many times when you don't do that, what happens is that man may not be alive today. Mm -hmm. Okay, and he, he schooled that cop. At the end of the day, that cop left. Mm -hmm. And all he had was a photograph that said, you look like this guy that has mm -hmm. a warrant. And he said exactly what he should have said. What's your name? I don't have to tell you my name. I'm in my yard. Yeah. If, if you know it's me, then he should have been putting handcuffs on. He should have known the Right. Yeah. You see but where I'm so going many with people that? don't even know their oh, rights. There you go. Exactly. There you go. So true. <sighs> it's so depressing. There has been so much. I mean, police brutality is nothing new. You know, all the way back from civil rights movement to Jim Crow to. I mean, it's been rampant for many, many years. It's, it's changed its look, mm -hmm. but it is still very prevalent. Um, and it does make us feel useless and helpless. What I want to know is what has happened recently in the police force, in the mindset of the police, um, where they feel that 
automatically out the gate there has to be aggression. Um, now I know it's been going on, but right now it seems very rampant. What do you think needs to happen to fix this? So it's, it is the, the typical, it's do what I say and do it now mentality, as police have been doing for many years, because I have this authority now over you. You know, people say, well, you know, I grew up respecting the police. People who say that come from communities where the police respected them. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you come from a community where the police have not respected you, how do you expect a citizen to respect a police officer just because they showed up? And that's the problem, you know? So it should start with the police officer coming out of the car, instead of talking to people from the window, instead of talking down to people, get on their level and talk about something that has absolutely nothing to do with policing. Mm -hmm. How are you doing today? Yeah. yeah like man. I said, how are you doing today? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Hey there. It goes, so a, long mm -hmm. yeah, it goes a long way. Yeah. It goes a long way. And speaking of approach, you know, I took my son to see the movie, um, uh, The Hate You Give. Yeah, there you go. And the movie starts off with the father explaining to the children how to behave when they're pulled over by a police officer. Can you give us some of the, the tips that you know from being a police officer for many years? that you can tell us to tell our kids? Because I have an 11-year-old son, yeah. and an 8-year-old son, and an 18-year-old son. So, yeah. Absolutely, um, absolutely. And my husband. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what, can, what, what, are, what are the steps, they, what do they need to do? I, I have a 24-year-old son, and I've given this same conversation to him. And one of the most dangerous times and places to be as a black or brown teenager or young adult is getting pulled over in a traffic stop or getting stopped by a police officer. Mm. So. If a police officer can't manage that, then it's up to us to teach our children how to take over. All right, so follow me on this. If you're getting stopped by the police officer and you realize that he is doing something that you don't feel is right, mm -hmm. let him do it. Let him do it. If he's violating your rights, he's going in your pockets, we'll take care of that on the back end mm -hmm. as a parent, right? But the minute you start pushing back and doing everything, you're giving them an open door to move this up to another level. Mm, so at the end of the goodness. day, you know what? I'd rather you violate my rights than kill me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, the most you know, basic right we have is to live. And that's the only right that I can't let you have. Mm. Yeah. My goodness. We're going to have more with Detective Vince Velasquez when we return. Stay exactly where you are. Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. We are back with Detective Velasquez. So the question we had going during <laughs> commercials, um, how, who's policing the police? Yes. You know, that, that's a question I get asked often, and it's, it's the responsibility of each and every individual police officer, more so the veteran officers who have been around, to guide these young officers, men and women, because there are female officers that make grave mistakes every day. And to let them know that's not the way to do it. And if it gets to the point where you're violating the law, you gotta tell, I'm gonna tell. Yeah. I'm gonna okay. tell, I'm gonna be honest with you. So, and what happens is good cops don't see the dirt because the dirt doesn't show itself to the good cops. Mm. You follow where I'm going with that? Yes. So the dirt mm -hmm. finds the dirt. Yes, so, you attract so, what you are. So yeah. people yeah. say, well, why would you not, have, you've never seen that. Well, I, I don't see that because it won't show it to me. Because right. mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell. I'm not, listen, I'm not going to prison. I'm not gonna, you know, not provide for my family mm -hmm. because of something you did. Hello. My goodness, my goodness. Well, thank you so much for imparting so much knowledge. I know we wouldn't want to have this conversation for quite some time. We could have it 90 times. We sure can.